Hello everyone. My name is Michael Forson from UNICEF Nigeria, and I'm well pleased to be part of this RWSN forum. I'm going to present uh, the experiences of UNICEF Nigeria and the government of Nigeria in the public procurement, quality control, and assurance at scale for solar powered water systems. My presentation will look at the following outline. First, I'll talk a bit about the background and the trends that led us to embark on large scale procurement of solar powered water system. Secondly, we will look at the procurement process and the quality assurance systems that we put in place. Then we will look at the tools and systems that we use for the quality assurance of the whole process that we went through. Then, of course, with every system or processes, there are challenges. So I will also talk a bit about the key challenges and then how we dealt with these challenges. Then finally, what are the lessons that we learned that we would like to share with you so that uh, we could all draw from these lessons and improve on what we're doing. So first, on the background, um, we saw that uh, in Nigeria, Looking at the population and the need, uh, a lot of the system water facilities that we had were being challenged by climate change. So we saw the increased need to have a climate resilient water systems. So uh, when we looked at it, that what came to mind is really to look at the whole solar harnessing the green energy to make it climate resilient. Then again, there was also a shift towards a more sustainable water facilities because we realized here in Nigeria that some of the systems that we put in place because we don't really look at the uh, we had challenges with the quality. They may be operating for a while and then uh, they go out of operation. Interestingly, we also found an opportunity that made us look at the solar systems because there was a vast, a very huge local market of solar panels and accessories. Uh, although they are not manufactured in Nigeria, but they are imported. So comparatively, uh, comparing to a, a new import for a procurement, once the local market is available, this was a very good opportunity that we uh, moved on. Then uh, we also realized that there is also reduction in operation and maintenance cost over time. Unlike the diesel powered uh, water facilities where even buying of diesel alone is quite a huge cost to the communities. So between 2014 to 2021, uh, we have a total of 1,109 solar powered water system that are newly constructed while we were able to rehabilitate 471. This is uh, in partnership with uh, the government of Nigeria. So looking at the graph uh, on our right, we can see that when we started in 2014, there was a slow uptick until 2018, where based on the lessons that we have learned, we were able to institute mechanism to ensure a smooth uh, implementation of the process and also to scale up. So we can see a, a greater uptick from 2018 forward. Now, within the same period, if we look at the construction and the rehabilitation, Nigeria was able to reduce the carbon emissions by almost 20,000 tons. This is as a result of using solar to pump water. And this is quite a huge achievement. Then also uh, we saw the systems and institution cap institutional capacity was developed. Although Nigeria has a vast uh, I mean, contractor database, but then what we did, we realized that the systems were developed, the institutional capacity were also developed, and then we now have a solid system of procurement, construction, and management. So uh, next, I'm going to talk about the whole procurement process. We have uh, six main processes that we went through. The first is the initiation of the process, which to us is very important because here we have to define the roles. Uh, we have to identify the stakeholders, define their roles and responsibilities, 
and then apportion these responsibilities for all of us to be on the same page once that was done we moved to the next step which was defining the scope of what we want to do first we identify the geographical locations where we need to do this uh, intervention uh, we looked at the water demand the number of facilities for a particular geographical location we conduct the initial assessment and the feasibility studies and from this we also develop the standard drawings and the BOQs to guide the process now uh, the third point in the, the test step in the uh, procurement process is the selection of designs and development of dossiers. Here we select the appropriate design based on the standard designs and adapt it to respond to the recommendations of that particular area and then develop the whole bidding dossier which involves the drawing the instruction to contractors the blank uh, bill of quantities and all those stuff then the fourth step is the bid solicitation and evaluation of bids here we use an e-procurement system to solicit the bids from pre-qualified firm uh, the pre-qualification exercise, I will talk about it in the next slide because uh, that could happen around any step in the process. So I didn't talk about it, but we have a pre-qualified uh, database of contractors. So on the e-procurement system, we do an electronic procurement where all the bidding dossier are uploaded electronically. And then the bid from the pre-qualified contractors, they also submit their bids electronically. Then we have the state procurement committee that evaluates the bid and give the recommendations from there we move to the next step where the contracting and the mobilization to site so here the successful bidders were contacted and contracted and uh, they were mobilized to the site at the same time the third party supervision has been engaged in order to do the supervision then the sixth and the final step is the construction and contract management here the constru actual construction take place the supervision goes on with quality control points monitoring payment evaluation and then the handing over this process is a cycle and it continues as it goes as we uh, one uh, bid is ended we could start another bid and go through the process it's wet to uh, it's important to indicate that this whole process is owned and led by the federal government of Nigeria. Now, we have a couple of tools and systems for the quality control of the system. First, we have a database of uh, pre-qualified contractors. Now, this database, we did an initial call for expression of interest for all contractors open to all. We did a thorough assessment technically of the contractors. We looked at the equipment holding, we look at the experience, we look at the staff capacity, registration, financial holdings, and other things to make sure that these contractors are reliable. Then those who pre-qualified, who qualified were shortlisted and trained in the procurement guidelines and the processes. Then we developed the whole guidelines, which we call the harmonized procurement guidelines. These are a set of clear guidelines developed by the government partner uh, the government with unicef to guide all the procurement and then we have the periodic pre-qualification of firms which we do to ensure that the database is kept up to date then all the procurement that we've done followed these guidelines to remove any ambiguity Another quality control system is that we have a third party independent monitoring for the procurement. So this support is a service agreement with an engineering consulting firm to provide capacity burden for partners to monitor and the independent evaluation of completed works. The whole procurement support firm, uh, they provide also the legal interpretation of the procurement guidelines during the whole process. 
The, the e-procurement platform is basically an electronic system for collection and evaluating of bid, uh, which removes the human error that we encounter at times. It also improves transparency and it creates a database of procured facilities for easy tracking. So here we see a picture of how the platform looks like and it's accessible to all bidders for them to know. A couple of challenges we faced. First, was uh, the initial resistance from partners. You know, any new system, when you put in, you get the initial resistance, but we dealt with it through uh, sensitization meetings and also the procurement uh, harmonized guidelines also uh, threw more light onto it. Second, we manage uh, how we manage conflict of interest. So here, the transparency of the state leading the process and the third party supervision minimized all conflict of interest. Then the e-procurement guidelines also is quite transparent. So any conflict of interest is clearly seen and removed. Then the other thing is the quality of materials. Although we have the vast market, we always encounter fake and uh, low quality materials like the panel. So we have a control point in the procurement processes where the third party inspect the materials before and give approval before they are used. Then the final challenge that we had was delays in construction, which results in over expenditure. So when we see these things, we reevaluate, we apply at arbitration, and in some cases, we have to reaward the contract in order to get going. Key lessons learned. I think uh, a couple of lessons ownership by government partners is very key to drive these processes. Then Independent support brings objectivity and help resolve the conflict. And this we found from the third party. Then getting it right takes time, but better in the long run. We took a long time from the previous graph I saw, I showed on the update, uh, uptake. You saw that from uh, 2014, it was very slow before it got better. And then we saw the uptake. Then the flexibility to review designs and adapt to changing context. Although we have the standard designs, but with time, every location we adapt it and make adjustment to reflect the challenges. Then the I just mentioned that also the standard drawings, they must be adaptable. And finally, the clarity of the contract management process from the harmonized procurement guidelines really helped us. Thank you very much.